Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do part 10, Lavinia Tours 10 um, and it's part one. So this is the making of all the little bits and our theme, if you like, is bonfire. So you can imagine what sort of colours we're going to be using. There's going to be yellows, there's going to be oranges. But what usually happens at a bonfire is, of course, fireworks. So we're going to be doing a fair bit of that as well. And I'll show you. So enough of me chatting. I'm not going to show you some a wonderful collection of all the bits we're going to make. Let's just crack on. So come with me and let me show you how it's done. Okie dokie. So we're going to start off stamping the mice just so that we know we've done them. <laughs> So using a piece of A5 multifarious card and some VersaFine Clair Nocturne ink, you're going to use a Tilly and Tango Mini and Moo Basil and BB stamps. So I'm just stamping Basil with his lamp and BB with her instrument. And then we've got a variation of Tilly, Tango, Mini or Moo. Whoever you fancy, I just fancied these, this little group of mices, mice, to um, be together. So yes, they are more or less in a line. Um, and then there's one that I'm printing twice, stamping twice. So one at the bottom, all on his ownio, and the rest in a line and I'm creating this sort of ripped edge um, in a sort in an arc really and stencil brush size nine in large circles elements ink sundance jolly good add a little bit of russet orange we're thinking fire colors here um, and blend it in gently to that sundance now we've got some Elements Ink Emperor Red. And that's just going on the very edges of that ripped arc. Blending in nicely with the russet orange as well. So using Elements Ink Henna. Yes, Elements Ink Henna. Um, we're just grounding our mice doesn't need to be a straight line just as long as it looks like they're standing on something and I'm going with this idea that it's in the dark and it, we can't really tell what what they're standing on so now elements ink henna on the right of your mouse it is all going to make sense because this mouse is going to be lying down so what I've done is created that ground just there. And again, ripping around the shape of the mouse. So we're going to need some russet orange on the top there. And Sundance in the middle, all around the mouse. If we use that yellow colour around our characters, it tends to make them um, look as if they're in the spotlight. So it draws your eye naturally to them. And there's your Emperor Red just going on the ripped edges again. Fabulous. Let's start these fireworks. So I've got two pieces of A4 black card, some Versamark and a flower collection stamp. Now, I do like this stamp. You're not actually going to be able to see which one it is, really, until that wow embossing powder goes on it. Um, but it is a rather lovely stamp. Now, you're going to have to trust that I am actually stamping something on here um, because it's not showing up on the camera. So here we go. The magic revealed. Uh, that was Wow Embossing Powder White Opaque Regular. And you can see as we heat it up with the heat tool just how lovely that looks. Now, I've got the leaf creeper stamp and I worked out that I wanted to do it with the um, wider base at the bottom of my stamping 
so that it tapers up into that lovely display that we just made. So I've used white, the same embossing powder will be used the whole way through. Okay, so it's white opaque regular. And that's just a mini North Star that I've done with Versamark again. Just heat them up. I know they look white, but trust me, they won't by the end. Um, this is our Burst of Stars stamp, which is fantastic for looking like fireworks. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's pop some of that embossing powder on so you can see what I mean. Fab. Fab Aruni. And just heat it up until it changes and solidifies when it dries. There we go. Doing the same again. We're going to have two. You know those sort of fireworks that just go whizz up in the air and then poof at the top. That's what we're aiming for. Sorry about the sound effects. I hope they didn't make you jump. There we go. That's the badger. And we'll just pop another of the mini North Stars on the top. You saw me there with a, one of the watercolour brushes. If you see any bits of powder that you don't like the look of, do go in with a brush very gently and just remove it before you heat set it. So there you go. There's a mini North Star little bit of embossing powder and with your heat tool bring it to life. Now we're going on to another set of fireworks so this is Star Group Mini with some Versamark doing that invisible pattern again. I think I've done five of these. Yep there we go and just heat that up Amazing stuff, isn't it? There we go. And now we're going to do the same sort of thing, but I think I do six of these. And this is the Flower Group Mini. Although it doesn't show up on camera, believe me, when you're doing it yourself, you do have an inkling of where you're stamping. It's not all done blind. You know, you, you can... C. There we go. And heat that up again. So this is the Burst of Stars stamp again, inked up with Versamark. And it's going straight down the middle. And I think we're having two of those again. Super. And heat them up. Now, what have I got here? Yes, a mini North Star again, right at the top. And it gives a lovely feeling of them whooshing, doesn't it? Let's add some colour to these fireworks now because they can't all be white. There we go. So I've got, um, these are going to be built up with layers of colour. Okay, so this is Element Ink Blue Atoll. And you're going to put this on and you will notice that it does sort of disappear. But if you think about it, it's water-based, it's got to dry, it's got to go somewhere and it's not going to be able to do that. So we're just layering the colour up. So don't panic when you think, gosh, that's not as bright as I want it. It will be by the end because we will start with Elements Ink and then finish with something else. So that was Emperor Red and Sundance. Adding the colour on. But see how even at that, this stage, it's coming to life. It's fabulous. So 
So we've got some Della Blue going on that very first one that we did. Now, now this is some confetti on the tail. And now we crack open the Posca pen. So this is your glittery pink. And if you use a stencil brush to tap it, you get these lovely splatters. And that's quite organic, quite, you know, as if it's um, a, not a printed pattern, if you like. It's got more life to it when there's something out of pattern. And we're doing the same sort of thing, but with the glittery yellow Posca pen. And these will really catch the light. Moving swiftly on to fireworks page number two, please. Again, some splatters. If you want to create a tail for some of these, then do it with your glittery Posca pen. Just has to be dots. So simple. Okay, and again, we've got glittery red Posca pen. And I'm just using that to create some splatters and extra light around there, which is rather fabulous. Now you can see that I'm starting to add colour with my glittery Posca pens on top of that embossing powder that we did earlier. And that, my friends, will set beautifully. OK, and there's my aqua green which is a lovely pen. And this is the lighter, or is it the darker? Well, it's the darker one of the glittery Posca pens. And I'm just colouring in those flowers with them. Not all of them. I'm just choosing. Now, obviously, these are my ideas, but you are most welcome to change your colours according to your colour scheme. But the glittery Posca pen does give a beautiful sheen. Now, let us build a bonfire. To do this, I'm using some Dreamscape papers and I'm going for earthy tones. That's what I'm looking for. So I've got a brownie, uh, paler brown and a brown and greeny page. And I'm just going to add some colour with some Elements inks. And this is, my friends, Elements Ink Henna. Um, so I've just got a stencil brush size nine, big circles, creating a different um, colour palette by adding my colours. And again, to the paler one as well. This will make sense, I promise. <laughs> Maybe not this time round, but for the next piece it will make sense. Okay. So now we're going to choose our second colour, which I'm going for the russet orange. And again, size nine stencil brush and just adding some of that colour to it. And it just changes the colour palette of the piece of paper that we're using, which is rather lovely. OK, so fire starter. What is this, I hear you ask? Well, it is Medela, and we are stamping the small Medela stamp using Versafine Claire Nocturne onto some DL Multifarious card. Rather stunning stamp, this. And this is my Elements Ink Blue Atoll with a size 9 stencil brush. And I've just gone around her, gone around the dragon. Now, in large swirling motions with your sun dance, just create this stream of yellow coming from Medela. And we've got russet orange. And if you dip your brush in it and just do a couple of blobs down, it gives the impression of something moving. And then we can add the orange at the bottom. Now finish that off with that lovely Elements Ink Emperor Red. And while it may not look that stunning, trust me, it will. So I'm just going to rip it out. I do love ripping for creating dramatic pieces and blending things into the background that already exists there. It's rather lovely. So look at that. Once you've taken that excess white space away, 
it starts to come alive, doesn't it? Stunning. Here we go. So I'm getting rid of that white space by just using the edge of the last ink on the brushes of those colours. Right, so we're stamping the little bits. This is a lovely stamp called Stargazing. And I've always wondered what I was going to use it for. But today is your lucky day. So I'm stamping it with Versafine Claire Nocturne. And just on, I've said DL, but to be quite honest with you, if you've got, you know, the ends of some A4 or whatever, or A5, just stamp that on there. It would be lovely. Now, these are the Forest Lanterns. I'm going to stamp a few of these because I quite fancy them being the lighting at their bonfire. And it sort of creates a cosy feeling of, you know, on the ground and everything else happening up in the sky. Aren't they pretty? I think so. So if you can get about six on one sheet of paper. They don't all have to be the same height. It's completely up to you. Okay, cool beans. So now we are going to go to colour. So this is our Elements Ink Henna that we've just put on the base, okay? And we're just doing that around the bases of the forest lanterns, making sure that the base is darker and then taking some of that ink further up in a lovely misty sort of way. So now this is Elements Ink Rustic, Russet Orange, Rustic, Russet Orange, and we're just creating almost like a rainbow if you like, but a lovely arc above their heads. While you've got that orange brush out, Continue that idea of once the brown stops, bring that orange in towards where the light is. I said it was russet orange. There you go. <laughs> so this is our Emperor Red and I'm just using that on the outside edge of the arc. Mm. Above the heads of the star stargazing fairies. Super. Yep, it's the turn of Sundance. And the Sundance goes around the outside of the fairies and around the outside of the lanterns. Super. So back to ripping. You know me. So I'm going along with this arc idea. And if you don't like how thick your rip looks, just go back in and rip it a little bit smaller. There we go. So this is em uh, Emperor Red. Elements Ink Emperor Red. Just finishing off the arc there. And you can see here I've got the collection of all the bits and pieces that we've done. And I'm just ripping out my forest lanterns by going around the outside of them. Once you fully commit to ripping things, you sort of lose this um, feeling that everything has to be neat and tidy. And I think it's wonderful. You did it. Well done. Who'd have thunk all those months ago that we would get to Lavinia Tours 10 and start doing all those exciting things to do with bonfire night and um, bonfires and fireworks and colour and... But it all happens in the dark, doesn't it? And that's why we've done it on the black card. I do hope you've enjoyed having a go at doing these bits and pieces with me. Wait until next time and you'll see how they all come together. It's going to be great fun, I promise. Um, a real dramatic display. Anyway, thank you for coming along and having a go. If you've got any comments you'd like to make about this craft, please pop them in the post below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. But in the meantime, you take care and happy crafting. Bye.